It's a daunting task, heading down Mall's Gap, facing those spectacular but scary Kerry Mountains. I've always consoled myself with one thing. At least I'm not facing the Kerry footballers in the Munster final here in Killarney. At Croke Park, Anna will be attempting to win the Ulster title for the third successive year and become the first county since Down in 1961 to win a three in a row in Ulster. start inside with the left boot inside towards Danny Colladay comes off his chest Kerry not out of the woods yet and that seems to be the final nail thrust into the coffin there's been plenty of memorable moments between the two sides over the years so let's hope today is another classic You're very welcome indeed. We'll talk about the Ulster final in a moment. Let's talk about the Monster final first. And the funny thing is, the two of you have played for your counties for a long time. You can't ever remember actually playing here, and you played for Ulster here. I think I think we played for Derry here too. We, yeah. we were a bit hungover. I think it was the early one, the All Ireland. <laughs> Still got a goal though. Well, Kerry, I'm I think surprised I think it was, didn't come across Kerry. It was, an ugly, it was an ugly goal. Yeah, well, the Kerry, I think, at that time played some a lot of their home league matches in Tralee. Of course, so, yes, yeah. Uh, yeah. They seldom used this, I think, until yeah. they did up the, and put in the new pitch here. I think I played with Leinster here against uh, Munster in the Railway Cup, but I don't think I ever played with Mead in, uh, in, a, in a league match. I think they were all in Tralee. Well, happily, it's a lovely setting today for this match, yes, for this Munster yeah. final. The sun is shining here in Killarney. The, the bad weather of yesterday has cleared away. So, a little bit of, of wind, but it should be a good game. A lot of wind. A lot of, a lot of wind. And yep. really a very strong breeze. You know, it's like, almost like a sea breeze coming down the pitch. And, uh, but it is a beautiful setting for it. And, I mean, we, we drove up from Cork Airport. And, I mean, it's just so majestic driving through the wilderness. Like, yeah. And we came, <laughs> we came through Glen Fless. That wilderness is called Cork, by we, the way. We, we, <laughs> we came through Glen Fless, where Moyna is from. Yes. And where did they get a football team from? Mm. We could see about how many houses could we see? Oh, Maybe six. Yeah, yeah. And they were able to win the, the Kerry That's Championship. Right. It, just yeah. it just shows, I suppose, that in Kerry, Football is part of the blood and it's oh, part yeah. of the heritage yeah. here and that every child in every village and every parish is expected to play. And I suppose it means that every parish then, because of the limitation of numbers, look after all the young talent yes. that they have and probably uh, as a result to bring on players who might be lost in, in areas where there's a bigger choice. Well, football has been very much part of the blood and Johnny Gold and Armagh the last couple of years as well. Our first match today, the Ulster final. Well, I'll tell you one thing, Michael, the conditions today are so much better than yesterday. That would be uh, quite easy, obviously. There's a nice fresh breeze there, Martin. Yes, yeah, going right on the pitch, Jaron. It's going to make a difference, actually. Whoever wins the toss will probably play with the breeze and hopefully go into a big lead at half-time. But certainly it, it is considerable at the moment. Kerry are the raging hot favourites going for four in a row against a Cork team that we don't really know what kind of a team they're going to be. Yeah, well, Kerry are favourites on the basis maybe of what they did last year. I don't think they have been particularly impressive in the championship to date, even though they've had both of their games here. But against Cork last year, they beat them 119 to 9 in the All Ireland semi final and 111 to 11 in the Munster final. And they seem to have the hoodoo over Cork in recent years. In particular, Darrow Shea reserves his best performances for games against Cork and would expect again today a big performance from him. So, Cork first tactic keep the score down keep the score down keep very defensive I'd say they will adopt a Tyrone method of playing get a lot of players in the, into the, their defensive half of the ground and try and keep it a low scoring game okay we'll be hearing from Martin and of course the throw in here in Killarney is at four o'clock And ask for a more beautiful setting for this year's Munster football final. The Kingdom are chasing their third successive title in the province this year, an honour they last achieved in the mid-80s. But Cork will be putting up a fight to deny that much sought after three in a row. The fans have been in and around Killarney since early morning and are looking forward to what we hope will be another exciting Munster final. You never know, um, they might win by four points because Cork didn't play well against Limerick but Kerry didn't play well against, against Chip either. Is the best team in Ireland? Cork are the best team in Ireland, are they? Of course they are. Why do you say that now? Because they play well and they're uh, good in the pitch. And you think they can beat Kerry today? I do. Um, so yeah. I think they'll up it today and they should come through by four or five points, I'd say, anyway. I can sense the confidence. Are you, would you agree with what he says? Of course, why not? So when was the last time Cork beat us? Well, they'll have to improve from last year, but he'll have to make a few changes. Hopefully they'll work now this today and that will give Kerry a good game. Anyway. I think it's plain sailing for Kerry today. They'll win by at least seven or eight points. Would you agree with that? Yeah, oh, it's definitely. 
I'd say 112, that's 15, minus 69 points. Kai Koki Bokent La Egan, Tasulum Gumnak in Nova, a Vecce. How can you make a good, you know? I just cared if we scored Eric Martian. Oh, scored then, like when my Marian Kiri Maris Fader Law, they think a Vecce Harter Do Tree, they could be better hay in the deck, Rod Egan than Torche. Well, that's how the fans are calling this one, and hopefully we'll have a great game of football come four o'clock this afternoon. Before all that, though, here on the Sunday game, we've got the second half of the Ulster final between Armagh and Johnny Gall from Croke Park, and that's coming up right after this commercial break. For the parade here, Joe, what's your thoughts on this one? Well, I just think that Cork looked to be in disarray, and although they looked extremely ugly and very bad against Limerick, they will be better than that, and they'll throw themselves they'll into it. But when you look at the Cork team sheet, there's about six or seven mm -hmm. players you've never heard of them before. Well, obviously, he five rang, Billy Morgan rang the changes, obviously, well, after last Well, they have five Munster final newcomers, two are debutants, they've never played senior football for Cork, and they're coming up against a Kerry team that have been slumbering thus far, but you'd expect them to ignite today. Well, uh, we have seen from Dublin after bad performance against Longford and Leash after a bad performance against Dublin that the team who, you know, are really down and out seem to bounce back and give something. I would expect that Cork would come out with a bit of passion, but Kerry would appear to have too much class. Let's see what happens in this second match live in the afternoon. Our commentators here in Fitzgerald Stadium, Killarney, Joe Canning and Martin Carney. Thank you very much indeed, Michael. Yes, the team's parading around here. It's uh, not a fact. Fitzgerald Stadium by any manner of means but the crowd on the stands you can see rising to the two teams here and the other side of the field well they're basking the sunshine the most beautiful of beautiful venues here the reeks in the background looking quite magnificent there's a great big wheel there part of a carnival in the town but right now we're looking for carnival football from Kerry and from Cork meeting in the championship yet again today they're meeting here for the 95th time it's a bit like salt and pepper i suppose cork and Kerry, the traditional finalists but of course it hasn't always been that while or that that case because in recent times we've seen limerick come and uh, they have had a couple of monster finals against Kerry. didn't quite make the breakthrough and player, players like Dermot Murphy, who's uh, been a very patient kind of man, who had to wait a good long ten years before he had his opportunity to finally get a chance of playing in the championship, and he's ready to take his opportunity this afternoon with both hands. Like the rest of them, Seamus Moynihan there from Glen Flesk, just out the road. You heard Joe Brawley maybe at the top of the programme talking about going through Glen Flesk, lovely little area outside Killarney, small area, and yet it produces wonderful footballers. Up against a Cork team this afternoon with a lot of changes, as you've heard. And the Cork followers, well, they've still travelled here in considerable numbers, not the kind of numbers we have been used to say over the last ten years or thereabouts. But nonetheless, they come here, it's a kind of an annual pilgrimage, and they're hoping that Derek Cavanaugh, their captain this afternoon, will be able to lead them to another monster success. Alongside me here, I've got Martin Carney. Martin, your thoughts? Good afternoon, Chair. Well, I'm really looking forward to the game, Chair. I'm looking forward to a big court performance. The Kerry are coming in here, raging hot favourites on the basis probably of two wins so far. But they haven't done anything exceptional. Now, in recent years, they've had the injury, injury uh, the Indian sign, I should say, over court. And again, if Darrow Shea and Kieran Donaghy can gain midfield mastery, then I think they will win it. But with nine newcomers, I would expect a spirited, furious performance from court. You would kind of doubt maybe if they had the forward capacity to dismantle the Kerry defence, but nonetheless, at worst I'd hope for a great contest, at best I'd hope for a thriller. We caught a little glimpse there of Billy Morgan, the uh, Cork manager, and of course it was here 40 years ago that he made a championship debut. He's going to get rid of the camera. <laughs> well, I can tell you what happened anyway. It was 1966 he played his first monster final against Kerry, uh, at that particular stage, I think, 1965, Cork had uh, not reached the final. It was Limerick that year who uh, competed against Kerry for honours, and there were changes in the Cork set-up after that, and Billy was one of those changes, came into goal. Well, that is the setting. It is one of the great venues that we are fortunate enough to get to around the country and to enjoy the splendid hospitality that is Killarney. It always is. And they will bring their own sense of humour and 
mix well. Jack O'Connor, what a job he has done. Last couple of years in charge there with his selectors. You see Jerry O'Keefe there and Johnny Colladay, the former goalkeeper as well. One of his selectors, Johnny, there on the left-hand side of the picture. One of the great goalkeepers. In fact, come to think about it, between Billy Morgan and Johnny Colladay, quite a tradition of keeping goal in monster teams in Railway Cup competitions down the years between them. Well, it was Kerry who won the toss, and they will play, it seems, from left to right in the first half. And Colin Cooper and company will be playing, playing against a breeze. It's quite a lively breeze, Martin. Yes, yeah, certainly when we were out there early on, Jared, it was a very strong breeze blowing from right to left. And again, whoever takes advantage of it needs to build up a considerable score. Again, just looking at the Kerry forward line, I mean, you have such experience in that team overall. With Again, they will be hoping to exploit more out of Colin Cooper, who's had a quiet year so far. I don't think he has scored from play. But again, in Munster finals, you can expect him to reignite his, his season. Well, he's got three points so far in the championship, all of them from freeze. He's looking for two more points, and if he gets two more points in today's game, that will bring his tally for Kerry to 100 points in all. He's at eight goals and 74 so far, and that translates into points 98. Well, the crowd now turning to face the tricolour. Kerry with 70 monster wins, looking for a 71st, the favourites, overwhelming favourites. The match to be refereed by Joe McQuillan from Cavan. It's his first ever time refereeing a monster championship match, and it's also his first ever time in County Kerry. Well, I'm sure that's a good ad for Cavan people to come down and have some holidays here. Ready for the opening half then. And it is Kerry who play from left to right for the opening 35 minutes. Cork, so far with 34 titles, will it be number 35? They are rank outsiders. The Artane Boys Band moving away. It's their first time playing here, by the way, since 1937, I'm told. They were here for the All-Ireland Hurling Final that year, which was played in Killarney, uh, and it was between Kilkenny and Tipperary. So, a big welcome back to the 2006 version of the Artane Band, boys and girls, of course. So, after the preliminaries, the referee just waiting for the band to make their way off in case the ball lands down around the uh, cork right corner forward position. <laughs> lovely, lovely sunny day. The wind is a definite factor. We're looking for good entertainment. And it's Cork who tried to make the opening break here with Derek Kavanagh. Losing his way, however, to Kieran Donaghy. Donaghy, the big towering man in midfield. Ball spills away here as far as Mossy Lyons. Kerry tried to build once again. Dara O'Shea. Feeding it inside and looking for the boots. There's a trip. And that'll be the first free kick of the match. Engineered by Colin Cooper. Here he is again. Just a little tangle there. Little tangle, very soft. Free actually, George. Didn't seem to be going anywhere, but just caught, I think, Graham Cathy's foot. So it gives Brian Sheehan from St. Mary's an opportunity then to put over the opening point of the match. He's taken over, of course, from the great Dara O'Kineda as a leader of the attack and free taker from St. Mary's, which, of course, is Morris Fitzgerald's club. 35 metres out, it swings to the left and it's swung away and it's put it wide. He has a beautiful place kicker, Ger, actually, Brian Sheehan, but that time he seemed to get the ball completely wrong and again the ball drifted wide. Well, it must be said, there is a fair breeze blowing into his face. Well, he'll have to come to terms with that breeze, they all will. Kick out to be taken by Alan Quirk. It's actually his second Munster final. He came on as a sub for Kevin O'Dwyer in 2002. Big scramble for possession here in the centre of the field. Sean O'Brien from Nemo Rangers going down. Willingly taking it there ahead of Owen Brosnan. 
Well, when the two teams met in the league, it was very interesting that Cork were more or less cleaned out in midfield. O'Brien here is one of the Tigers. He will really work hard for every possible ball that's going to come his way. He'll scrap for everything, you can be certain. Colin Lane, the physio, attending to him. And Big Brosnan, of course, operating today at left half forward. We're looking for changes out around the field, here, there and everywhere. This is going to be taken by Michael Shields. There was a suggestion he might play at full back this afternoon in a switch formation. But it's Kerry who have it back there with Mark O'Shea. He'll probably be given the task of picking up James Masters. Donaghy with a very, very quick transfer. Nice movement by Kerry. Swiftly forward, trying to get it into the inside forwards. Nicely taken away there by Michael Prout. Graham County feeding it ahead here as far as Kevin McMahon from Carberry Rangers. Graham County once again now, 50 metres out from goal. Play there as far as Kevin McMahon. McMahon looking for the opening score. And McMahon is That's a really stylish score that time from Kevin McMahon. A great, great force out of the defence that time from Graham Canty. Setting the example, and incidentally, Graham Canty is marking Colin Cooper at the moment. But again, a great confidence booster for Kevin McMahon. That is interesting. We were expecting indeed that Graham Canty would have been the one to pick up the Gooch. Now, will the Gooch go walkies and take Graham Canty out the field? Michael Prout is in there minding the house at the moment at fullback. Meanwhile, Kerry point behind that's Cher Spillan bounce not deceiving Aidan O'Mahony they get it out again working as far as Dara O'Shea good challenge there by Anthony Lynch Corker in tussling for everything free taken by Seamus Moynihan up as far as Dara O'Shea two of the more experienced members of the team Beautiful ball across here towards the new man, Paul O'Connor. Michael Prout, his marker. O'Connor looking to get in a decent shot here. Closed down. Ball spills away to Kieran O'Connor. Corner back. Moving out smartly here. Played back towards O'Connor. Cork with a lot of hand passes out of defence, which has been a trend this year. Michael Prout going long then. Nicely in as far as Masters, looking for another score, and he sweeps it over the bar. That's two attacks for Cork now, and it produces two scores. The first for Kevin McMahon, the second now for James Masters. Got onto it here, got away from his man, one sweeping movement, and straight over the crossbar. Yeah, and again, what said that of actually was the quality of the crossfield ball. And again, Master just got the ball, one look at the post and over the bar. But it's noticeable that Cork are playing very much a northern type of game. Two inside forwards, everybody else getting behind the ball. Again, the wind holding it up very noticeably. And what a jump in the air by Kieran Donaghy from Austin Stacks. Well, if he's going to win that ball in midfield, he could provide quite a platform for Kerry to build their many attacks. Darrell Shea running into a cul-de-sac, taken by Canty, getting there ahead of the Gooch. Canty fisting it away, spilled and then regained. Michael Shields. Into space, loads and loads of space down there. Marco Shea coming across, taking it one-handed. Linking up with his goalkeeper, who of course is Dermot Murphy. Out as far as Seamus Moynihan, playing in his 12th final this afternoon. That's 12th Munster final. Tomoso Shea, too many steps. Referee Joe McCullen, very vigilant. Yeah, I thought that time actually Tomoso Shea was a little hard, hard done by, but been penalised for that. He was being put under pressure, didn't think he overcarried it, but again, it presents James Masters with a very, very good opportunity to increase the score line. Well, it's a very good start by the challengers from Cork. And Billy Morgan will want to see them maintain this pressure on Dermot Murphy's goal. Masters right in front of the posts. But he is 40 metres out. Wind behind him. Looking for his second of the day. First from the three. That's straight over the bar. 
So James Master is making it three points to nil. All of the scoring being done by Cork. Kerry with one attack earlier on, a missed opportunity from a free. Yeah, it's an excellent platform that Cork can now build on, actually. They've started the game very confidently. They're moving the ball well. And again, they're playing with great spirit. But it must be re-emphasised again, Jared. They have a quite a strong win behind them. Very definitely. This time the kick out towards the wings. Kerry trying to win their own kick out. Paul Galvin, oof, shoulder there by Kevin McMahon. Going to ground and the referee giving him a free. Bit of dispute about it, but it's Paul Galvin who is down there on the ground. Yeah, I think he collided that time with Kevin McMahon. He was trying to sidestep him, actually, and I think as he sidestepped him, Jerry, we'll see it here. Kevin McMahon's actually just caught him on the side of the jaw. Referee and everybody else taking an opportunity to get on board some liquid. Such a contrast from yesterday. Everybody hiding from the rain and the wind yesterday. Billy Morgan, who in the past has led Cork to seven Munster Championship wins. Up against Jack O'Connor, who, of course, has enjoyed enormous success over the last number of years. All-Ireland success in 2004 when he took over from Paddy O'Shea. League and Championship wins that year. Picked up the Munster title last year, of course, as well. Beaten by Tyrone, who are now out of the championship, of course. And all the leading contenders, I think, are going to get renewed heart from all of that. Yeah, just watch it here again, Ger. Certainly, Kevin McMahon's elbow was up that time, and Paul Galvin definitely felt the force of it. Could be slightly concussed after that, and probably Kevin McMahon is lucky he didn't pick up a card. No cards issued so far. Declan O'Sullivan, the captain, back to Galvin, who's recovered, thankfully. Again, Kevin McMahon making sure he doesn't make too much progress on the referee this time. Issy is the black card to him, so he's been ticked. Swiftly forward here towards Paul O'Connor, the newcomer. Played around in there. Again, they try to jump forward here. Lots of effort, and in the end, the referee seeing a dragging back. In spite of the protestations there of Anthony Lynch, it's going to be uh, a free. Watch it again here. Yeah, great run forward that time from Owen Brosnan, who incidentally just seemed to be playing at centre-half forward from the beginning of the game, and Declan O'Sullivan is playing over on the left. So this free to be taken by Colum Cooper from nearby Dr. Crokes, knocking it over the bar. Big huge cheer. Kerry's first point comes after 10 minutes of play. So that's four points in the championship this year for Colum Cooper. 3-1. Well, the opening 10 minutes has effectively been won by Cork. And now you wait for a Kerry response. Cork's tactics and the game plan have worked so far. I notice that Pierce O'Neill is operating by and large in midfield. Nicholas Murphy is playing on the 40, there to win the kickouts. Cork win this kick out and it's McMahon floating it in dangerously. Knocked down. Bit of a scramble. Everybody in after it. Sean O'Brien right in the thick of the action. Trying to take on Seamus Moynihan. O'Brien looking for a player outside. Offloaded with difficulty. And it's Fintan Gould from McCroom who puts it over the bar. His first point of the day. Very good score indeed in his fifth championship match. And it's four points to one. And that was the result of hard work and good skill at the end of it all. Yeah, it's a great reward actually for the work that Shawnee Bryan put in that time. He, he went in, won a very, very difficult ball, again fed the ball out, and again well finished by Finton Gould. Again, the wind holding it up quite noticeably. Some pushing. Protests by Cork's captain Derek Cavanaugh, but the free very quickly taken. In it goes once again here towards Brian Sheehan. Taking on Michael Shields. Quick release. Gooch waiting, wondering, but that's going left. Doesn't reach its intended target. So he still is one point short of 100 in his uh, Kerry career. Second wide for Kerry in the match.
Well, it's settling down to be quite an intriguing game, this. Yes, and again, Ger, we said it beforehand in a preamble that it's important that Cork would have a good start in this so as to build their confidence. Because they are coming in here under a cloud. They are coming here definitely being second, uh, you know, second favourites. So it's up to them to really take the game to carry. You just got a shot there of Pierce O'Neill and Kieran Donaghy marking one another from midfield. Of course, they're part of the underdogs team of 2004. They played in midfield against Kerry. Kerry trying to win this ball back, succeeding. Again, it is Stamos O'Shea, had a storming match last year in Porky Cueve in the Munster final. His brother Mark here, who got a first-half point, put under pressure, enormous pressure. It's the kind of pressure, as Martin Carney was saying, that you would have associated with the Tyrones of the Armas. Cork have now adopted it as well. It's Kevin McMahon inside as far as Finton Gould, the release to Masters. And that, will it curl sufficiently? It hasn't quite. He was hoping the breeze would take it in. He's convinced, by the way, that it did go over the bar. Still arguing the point. Well, that certainly shows the player that's on top of his form. He's right out in the sideline, takes a look at the post and has a goal. And when it's signalled wide, he still has the deck to go in and determine that it should have been, uh, you know, allowed a point. Just watch the finger up there. He was convinced it was the score. Well, as we always say, if it finishes with a point between them, that will be one of the debating points. That's a good call by the two court midfielders. Kavanaugh there waiting this time for Nicholas Murphy. He's all on his own. Seamus Moynihan about to come in and present something of a barrier. And in the end, there's a foul and it's a free to Cork. Kerry haven't settled well. They haven't even started yet, Chair. They are so languid and so easy going. They haven't got into the, uh, the pace of the game whatsoever. There is an absolute absence of urgency out there in the part of the Kerry team at the moment. Have they been reading the papers? Have they seen the odds that the bookies are offering? They've been odds on to win this. And it must be hard for them in a way because they're odds on most times they play against Cork in a monster final. Kerry didn't retreat quickly enough. Mark O'Shea having a word with the referee, Joe McQuillan. There he is, still shaking the head. It's brought the ball 13 metres nearer the target. So another opportunity for James Masters to kick with the left boot. He's just about 30 metres out. Again, the wind over his left shoulder. Measured with great accuracy. Well, it's a dream start for Cork. Their fans know it. They're five-one up. It's a fantastic, uh, fantastic start for them, Jared. I must be saying they're playing with a very controlled fury at the moment. They're winning most of the balls around the middle of the field. Neither Darren O'Shea nor Kieran Donny have really got into the game, but they seem to have very, they have a very, very spirited approach to it that's standing them well at the moment. Jim Murphy ready to kick. One of four Kerry men, of course, to win All Star awards last year. Again, the breaks in midfield. This time it's won by Owen Brosnan on the 40. Great ball in towards Gooch. Spills away initially. County, busy as ever, keeps it away from the teenager Paul O'Connor. Works it into the middle as far as Nicholas Murphy. All the time in the world to try and place it down there. Good ball, but it's won back by Kerry once again. Once more they are motoring from centre-half back. Seamus Moynihan closed initially. Support from Tomas O'Shea. Again, they work it forward into the corner towards Paul O'Connor, but he's a good distance out from left corner forward, and the boot going in, and the referee says it's a free to Cork. Yeah, but just go back in that little play for a moment, Jerry. You see there was five Cork players to one Kerry player at that time. There's no support coming through in the Kerry lads, and there's great... Just watch it. Kerry players are, are Cork players in there in numbers. Only one Kerry player in there, and that's really what's happening at the moment, the, the absence of support in the Kerry team. Michael Proud to hit it. Well, with the way the game is developing in this first half, with the wind behind them, Cork will be hoping to have at least a five-point lead going in at half-time. They're leading by four at this stage. And there was a water bottle thrown in from the far side. I think Billy threw it in and discuss that time because of the free given against them. Well, you won't get all of the decisions, but he's a passionate man and it's a passionate game. Kerry once again now with Declan O'Sullivan now, it's very deep Moynihan alongside him and he's the centre half back moving forward towards the position he's occupying which is right half forward inside towards Colin Cooper playing it back here once again, this time to Paul Galvin, little check marking is tight inside, good call 
all the way through to Alan Quirk. Everybody left it for the goalkeeper. This is Derek Kavanagh taking it around Brian Sheehan. Next challenge coming in is Mossy Lyons. Then there's another shoulder, this time it's from Owen Brosnan. Good shoulder. Jers Milan, the centre half back for Cork, building it up again in the half back line. Michael Shields from the St. Finbars club, out as far as Pierce O'Neill. Playing in his first ever match for Cork at senior level, remember. He's never played league or championship. Cork's number 11 this afternoon. And that ball picked off the ground. Watch it again here. Yeah, it was a pick up. Everything is going Cork's way. Yeah, I don't know the reason you mentioned it earlier, Ger. Maybe Kerry are reading too much of the, or believing too much of their own press, but certainly at the moment throughout the field they're not sparking at all. Well, there's loads of time. There's three quarters of this match still to go, and James Masters ready to hit this from 45 meters out. Dropping it in dangerously, and Kerry have men back there. And there are bodies in the square, but I thought maybe after the ball had arrived, free anyway awarded. Comes out as far as Mark O'Shea. One man who can inspire them, but they have so many potential leaders in this team. Munster champions. Title on the line this afternoon in their own backyard. Declan O'Sullivan from Drummond Pierces. Jack O'Connor's club, of course. Easily seized on there by Anthony Lynch. Kerry are careless. This is James Masters. Going back, trying to make sure they get it. Kieran Donaghy was back trying to help out. And the referee saw some holding. Allows an advantage to Kerry. Comes to Dara O'Shea. Seamus Moynihan running into the challenge of Kevin McMahon. This time Kevin McMahon a little bit over vigorous. He's already been ticked by the referee. Has to be careful. Referee going back and he's showing the notebook now to... Another one of the players, this time it's uh, Donico O'Connor. Yeah, I don't think it was anything serious at all. I think both Donico O'Connor and uh, I think it was Kieran Donaghy, he just had the words with each other, but I don't think there was anything serious. Tomas O'Shea, oh, badly placed again, straight there to Derek Cavanaugh. This is Kieran O'Connor, two one of the two Ahada players in the court team. Fintan Gould at the end of all of that there, and the referee says he didn't play the ball quickly enough. He'll argue he had no chance. Owen Brosnan doesn't care, just tries to get this carry attack going, but the pass is very wayward. Well, I think you've been very fair to them, Jerry, saying this very wayward. They're, t they're, they're totally at odds with one another, they're not in the same wavelength at all. Pass is going astray, all players playing at one, support lacking. It's just a very inept show so far from Kerry. Meanwhile, Cork will want to try and make hay in the sunshine of Killarney. Nicholas Murphy trying to dispossess Seamus Moyne and his boot was going in anyway, might have been a free just before that. There's a black card shown to Nicholas Murphy. Seamus Moynihan just wants to have a little breather. Eight medals so far in Munchus Monster, seven of them won on the field in Munster finals. Looking for yet another at ninth this afternoon, some record. A ball was handled on the ground. Paul Galvin, this time the guilty party. Kerry need a timeout. 5-1 down, not playing well. No, and again, credit to Cork. They've got everybody behind the ball apart from two of their inside forwards. They're working much harder than Kerry at the moment. And they're just scrapping for everything. They knew exactly what they had to do and they were up for it. They believed they could win it. And they've got a chance here. And it's O'Connor! And it comes off the butt of the upright from Donald O'Connor's effort. Still in play, James Masters, a real let off that time for Kerry. Back towards Donald O'Connor once again. This time into the centre. The big man there, Pierce O'Neill. And the final effort leaving an awful lot to be desired. But what about the chance a little while earlier? Fantastic shot altogether. Again, just got it on his left foot. Draw it hard, beat Dermot Murphy. But again, unlucky for Cork, he came right across the face of the goal. Well, that was a miss there at the end by Pierce O'Neill. But the miss here will have so many people talking. He got right behind it here, Danico O'Connor, and he bounced off the upright, wide across the face of goal, and in the end, away to safety. Substitute for Kerry, 
coming up, we understand. Tom O'Sullivan is going to come in, and it'll be in in place of Mossy Lyons. That's the first substitution that uh, we're going to hear about and see. Well, I think Mossy Lyons is the unlucky one. You could take off any one of the Kerry outfield players at the moment is going so badly for them. Well, he's been very unlucky over the years. He was about to, well, he is playing his 10th championship match, the 28-year-old. But quite honestly, he looks like being the sacrificial lamb. Jack is not satisfied with the way things are going, and well, he might be. There's a lot to be concerned about. Let's go down to Jim Carney for, well, I thought we had some uh, reaction down there. We don't at the moment. Let's continue. Beautifully taken. Once again, it's Nicholas Murphy operating on the 40 in the main, although he's switching between the 40 and midfield. And the black book shown this time to Kieran Donaghy, so he's on a warning as well. Free to Cork. They look to be in control of this match, but bear in mind they still have the wind behind them in this first half. And it's a significant breeze. Once again, it is Tomo Soche. Little hand pass ahead here to his brother Mark. Let's keep it in the family, they're saying. Worked ahead here once again towards Colin Cooper. A point so far from a free. Again, Graham County refusing to give him any kind of leeway. They're working hard for it inside there. That's Paul O'Connor. Paul O'Connor angry with some of the challenges being meted out to him there by some of the Cork backs. Yeah, but again, it's a championship match. It was three or four Cork players in very snappily into that tackle there. And OK, they conceded a free. But Paul O'Connor, to be fair, he's in this championship debut uh, minor from last year. Probably just welcome to senior football. That's exactly it. Colum Cooper then. This is 40 metres out. Warm day. Lots and lots of tension about. Kerry fans frustrated so far. But this will pull just three between them. And it comes down up the post. Still an opportunity. In the end, it comes to Michael Shields. He leaves it for his goalkeeper, Alan Quirk. And Quirk get away with it once again. So the post has been hit at one end and the butt of the upright hit at the other. It's out to Kieran O'Connor. Once again, they leave it for Jess Villan, the Valley Garvin man. Striding forward here with purpose. And in the end, he is forward. And it is Seamus Moynihan who made contact with him. He will feel it was an accidental collision in the heat of the moment. Referee's going to have words. All begins to heat up a little bit. Yeah, well, the two number sixes that time certainly met at pace, and Ger Spillane came out worse of it, but Seamus Moynihan, again, probably did what any centre-half back has to do, go and meet the player coming through the middle. He's got to get booking, I think, for his trouble. Well, as we all know, he's anything but a dirty player, but he's got the opening yellow card in this match, Seamus Moynihan, and now has to be careful. But the fact of the matter is, Cork want to run the ball right at the heart of this Kerry defence, and the only way to stop them is get your body in the way. Yeah, maybe Seamus Moynihan is just willing to put his body in the line to try and maybe spark a revival among the, his other players. His teammates at the moment are simply just not on their game. Free to Cork. James Masters once again ready to kick it. Most of the frees so far have favoured a player who is kicking from the right or right of centre. If it had been at the other side, chances are that Donico O'Connor might have hit it. David Murphy then ready. Reverential hush before Masters comes up the strike and to send it over the bar. Four points for Masters. Eight out of nine against Limerick some four weeks ago. Four in the first half here. And there are 26 minutes gone. 6-1. Yeah, indeed. Cork, they must be commended for the fact they have a great appetite for the game at the moment. They've really got sucked into it from the word go. Whereas there's a systems failure in the Kerry team at the moment. None of their players really have sparked so far. Again, the midfield that we expect a lot from really is second best at the moment. And Cork have everything going for them at the moment. Well, full credit to the Cork supporters who came here because uh, an awful lot of people felt they have no chance whatsoever, their team. But they are proving the doubters wrong. But it's only the first half. Aidan O'Mahony 
sent right back down again by Michael Shields into the forwards. They may hand pass it around in their own half, but then but they, when they get to about the middle of the field, Cork go very long. Dara O'Shea trying to work it in here towards Paul O'Connor. And he's dispossessed brilliantly by Michael Prout. In his Munster final debut, Kevin McMahon working it out here to Sean O'Brien. Started very well, working tirelessly. Over there to challenge is Mark O'Shea. Everybody is looking for it. And the linesman on the far side giving it to Cork. Linesman today, Sil Doyle from Wexford and Derek Fahey, who is from Longford. Well, James Masters, as you can see, has come very, very deep inside to Derry Cavada. It's a measured performance from Cork. They know exactly what the game plan is about and they are putting it into practice to the letter as far as I can see so far. But being allowed by Kerry, Donico O'Connor, Masters again, having come in from the wing. Into space, not a good ball. Cutting it out here is Aiden O'Mahony from Rathmuir. Darrow Shea then, away to Galvin. He's yet to spark into action in the way we know that he can. There's a couple of players engaging in sumo wrestling off the ball. Vinton Gould, one of them. And the referee also calling across uh, Aidan O'Mahony there from Rathmore. So words for the two boys, not allowed in the code. Yeah, there was a little bit of all-in wrestling as the ball went up the field. I don't, there weren't any punches or anything thrown, but just wrestling on the ground. And again, a bit of common sense prevailing. Referee taking two names, players get back on their best behaviour. The two very mild-mannered young players. But it's the heat of the moment in a Munster final, as we all know. And this is the 117th Munster final. Yeah, it's just in the background there, we can see it going on. I think Aidan O'Mahony first, uh, you know, and Finn to go. They just grappled with one another, but again... The referee made, you know, applied common sense to the situation. It was poor quality sumo. <laughs> it was. Back to good quality football, we hope. That time the foul is on Sean O'Brien. This is a Kerry performance after 29 minutes with one point. That from a free. Under pressure again here. Kieran O'Connor has come up from cornerback to knock it over the bar. Well, dare I say it, it's almost like 1987 all over again when Kerry had been the dominant factor in Munster for so long and Cork came here almost as no hopers and they put on a performance like this. It's 7-1, they're leading by six and we're still under a half an hour of play. Yeah, and it's fully deserved to it, must be said. They're worth every single point of that, and maybe that goal had it gone in, there would have been worth that as well. But just Kerry are like rabbits in the head, like they're just completely dazzled or dazed by what's going on out there. Again, Cork win it with Nicholas Murphy. Well, they may have been outplayed in the league match in the centre of the park, but they're anything but being outplayed this afternoon. They're winning an awful lot of ball from their own kickouts and from Kerry's as well. Yeah, again, just watching two of them going up there. Again, just, just oh yeah, maybe just a twist. I think, uh, yeah, I think he twisted his knee that time. Uh, Nicholas Murphy twisted the knee maybe when he went down that time. Well, let's go down to Jim Carney for some news, Jim. Thank you very much indeed. Well, it's interesting down uh, beside the Kerry bench, Joe, that for all of the last 15 minutes or so, Kerry have been concerned about their forwards coming out the field. They would prefer if they'd stay in and keep their shape. At one stage, Jack O'Connor went in and had a word with Declan O'Sullivan. He wanted him to stay in full forward. Now, the last three players, they've warmed up as well. Very interesting, they're all forwards. Sean O'Sullivan, Mike Frank and Ronan O'Connor. Back to you, Joe. Thank you very much, Jim. That is really interesting. Kerry concerned about the way their forwards are not performing, coming too far out the park and warming up some substitutes. We thought it might be the other way around, that Cork, with all of the experiments going into this, that they might be the one, if it started badly, would be warming up the likes of, uh, well, for obvious reasons, Conor McCarthy or David Niblock, maybe. Oh, oh dear. Has this now spoiled the occasion? It'll be worth seeing that again. Joe McQuillan trying to restore order. Yeah, I think Anthony Lynch definitely was pulled that time for overcarrying again. Hadn't got support coming from, be from behind him. Again, reacted to it, but referee again isn't doing anything about it. 
Well, the referee is having words with the linesman. And in the end, Anthony Lynch is called across for that. And if it's going to be just a yellow... It's a red and he's been sent off for striking. Well, now that really could spoil it for Cork. They'd be going so well. This was the reaction. Yeah, he definitely caught him with an elbow. He caught Kieran Donaghy with an elbow that time. He reacted to the free beat. He had been... Just watch it here. He was holding the jersey and again came across him with an elbow. Again, if the, what the linesman saw was an elbow, that was definitely a sending off. Dear, oh dear. I don't think he's ever been sent off in his career before. No, one of the most sporting players I've come across, actually, has been a credit to the game over the years, and that's most out of character for him. Well, that is a downer for Cork after things were going so well. And straight away, Kerry replied with a point there by Brian Sheehan from the free. It's a second Kerry score. The margin is down to five. We're two minutes from half time, but significantly it's 15 against 14. Cork having lost Anthony Lynch. Two additional minutes to be played. Billy Morgan now will have to restructure. We'll have to restructure, but we've often seen it here that this brings out the best in the team. And Cork might, you know, they look to go into overdrive from now on and get maybe more and more players behind the ball. They're looking, in a sense, to have a five-point lead coming up to half-time, but their cause has been made all the more difficult by that sending off. Alan Quirk ready to kick this one back into action. Has that decision to dismiss Anthony Lynch tipped the balance in Kerry's favour. It's Seamus Moynihan tripped here by Nicholas Murphy. Kerry's free. Coming from a deep position. Michael McCarthy ahead here for Kieran Donaghy. Player involved with that incident a little while ago. Still they're working in towards Paul Galvin. Galvin is 20 metres out, making headway. And in the end, the referee blows his whistle and signals a free in, and Cork are incensed once again with referee Joe McQuillan. Finger pointing at the cabin official, referee telling them all to get back. Yeah. The notebook indeed shown, I think, to the Cork goalkeeper Alan Quirk for over vigorous protesting. Yeah, again, Galvin was cute that time, saw the gap, drove hard at it, invited the foul and got it. And again, I noticed that there seems to be a collective effort every time there is a decision in the last while, every court player surrounding him, maybe to try and pressurise the referee somewhat. They're not going to get him to reverse his decision, but certainly they're just putting extra pressure on him. Well, it's a high-pressure occasion. And Kerry with a relatively simple free here, entrusted to Brian Sheehan. Kicked the last one immediately after Anthony Lynch was sent off. This to make it very manageable heading into the second half. And Kerry will have the wind. And it is seven points to three. Yeah, when you consider Kerry went 22 minutes there without any score, and again it has taken the sending off actually maybe to just kick them into life again. And those two late points that they have scored now, again, will give them the, a little bit of confidence to, to face the, the, the second half. Well, they won't camouflage the fact that Kerry have been very, very poor in the first half. That a tribute to Cork's game plan and their excellence as a team working for one another. Kerry's only three scores have all come from freeze. Yeah, but Cork are working as good, as good as I've seen a Cork team working in many years. Tomos O'Shea. A little bit of a gap here. Paul Galvin. It's going to be interesting to see how Kerry use the extra player and who will be that extra player on the field. Notice Seamus Moynihan pushing forward on the far side as Paul Galvin is ready to take this line ball. There alongside him, Brian Sheehan. Going short, handled with difficulty, comes back to Declan O'Sullivan. And that's the opening point from play for Kerry. And now it's 7-4. And that ball coming from the sideline, from the line ball by Paul Galvin into Owen Brosnan. The quick release to O'Sullivan. And for a, for a moment, Cork just napping. Yeah, and it's taken them 36 minutes to get the first uh, uh, score from play. And again, Cork are just in a little bit of disarray since the sending off. You talked about a timeout earlier on, uh, Ger. Billy certainly needs to get his team into the dressing room now to try and get them to regroup. Only about 20 seconds of the added time still to be played. 
So once this is kicked out, I think the referee will probably take the whistle to his lips. We're competing with all the public address announcements here, but Alan Quirk been told to hurry it up. Referee signalling the end of the first half. First half where Cork dominated for long, long stretches, led by six points to one. And then Anthony Lynch sent off after 32 minutes. Kerry tagging on late scores there. They have plenty to do, but they'll have the breeze for the second 35 minutes as they set out in pursuit of their 71st Munster win. Cork will be happy enough, but it could have been a great deal better had things not panned out and developed as they did in the last five, six minutes. At halftime in Killarney, it is Cork 7, Kerry 4. Wheel of analysis and all of the second half for you right after the break. Half time between Cork and Kerry. Cork leading Kerry by seven points to four. They have to be reasonably pleased with that Colin O'Rourke and Joe Brally, but for 32 minutes they were doing even better than all that. No, absolutely. And Cork came out and played with the sort of passion that you would expect for a team under Billy Morgan. And they were very constructive. And Kerry seemed a bit lethargic. It always happens with a team who were overwhelming favourites. And Cork did the right thing, played with the win, got the lead, and everything seemed to be going fine for them, except they missed the goal chance and have now lost Anthony Lynch. So, you know, they were doing really well up to that. And now Kerry have come right back into the game with a couple of late points. Yeah, the wheels have not exactly gone off the wagon for Cork. Mm, but, you know, Kerry, Kerry have got a smell of it now, you can feel. Look, you know, th there's a very strong sea breeze blowing straight down the pitch. Yeah. You know, when you're sitting out there, it's a very strong breeze, yeah. very hard to play against. And we thought before the match, probably about seven or eight points lead is what Cork would need. And they were 7 Hitting 1, 32 yeah. minutes, Kerry asleep. And uh, now all of a sudden, they're 7 4 and a man down. And all stemming from an act of stupidity. There was we no need for it. I mean, sure. already he was being niggled and. Billy was up in the ante, Billy was throwing the water bottle on the sideline and the players were up for it, there was a bit of fury in the atmosphere, but it was a stupid thing for a seasoned player. Like yeah, we'll have a look at that in a moment, but before we do that, Colin, let's have a look at the more positive from Cork, some of the stuff that they were doing well earlier on. James Masters once again showing well in the early stages. Absolutely, and they're trying to channel a lot of the ball through him. I'm surprised actually that Kerry didn't drop another man back. They played a very orthodox game when you know they could have brought back a forward to play and sit in front of their full back line instead of that they allowed Cork come on to them and uh, you know Cork held on to the ball well long ball in and Masters got was strong enough to hold off Mark O'Shea and you know that's a sort of a trademark point for him over the shoulder very very accurate Mark O'Shea had done yeah. well on him apart from that no, but, but aside from that Masters hasn't been a feature of the game and, and interestingly enough which is the sign of a forward who's not that sure that he'll win his personal battle. He's going away out the field. I don't know why he was going out the field, but he was, I mean, we were watching him heading out maybe 60, 70 mm. metres, far too far out with that breeze. And well, I think one of the reasons is that Mark O'Shea has him for pace. If yes. it comes to a 50-50 ball, O'Shea is so speedy he's getting there. And uh, the rest of the Cork forward line, a bit in and out, you know, there's no sort of deadly assassin there. Let's have a look at the sending off that has changed the shape of this game. Now, Anthony Lynch will be disgusted with himself. He's not that kind of player. He's a no. good sportsman. He's a nice fella. He did something stupid. Let's have a look at it. Well, there was a bit of, there was a bit of niggling in the, in the run-up to it. I think that Galvin, who's been messing about, took a bit of a thump at him, two or three thumps, and then he was pushed down, and then the carry man came in. Yeah, but it was a very bad, nasty elbow, and he did definitely strike him. And, you know, in fairness to Donaghy, he didn't lie down and make a meal of it, but, I mean, it was a rotten, and he'd have a sore face tomorrow, Donaghy, I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. But it's a shame for such a great player. You can only say that he's... Gander was up after years of being beaten by Kerry, and now they were playing so well, and he's just... Because for a while there might be a yellow, you couldn't... No, which is no you can't argue with a referee. Yeah, it's no. a blatantly strike offence. It's a silly thing for Anthony Lynch to do, and Kerry, the Cork not have only lost probably their best player along with Graham Canty, but they've also lost a real inspirational leader type yeah. who they would need in the second half against the win because he'd be the type of player who'd get the ball and he'd burst out with it and he'd raise the team and raise the crowd. Now he's lost, so it's definitely a rear guard action. Ker yeah. Cork will have to play maybe with two men up and just hope to drag everybody back and work out short ball out of defence. Let's have a look at the goal chance that Cork had in the first half. Ball hit the post down here in front of us. This, this would have helped as well, obviously. Well, it is right. It's small margins that yeah. make the difference. And it was, you know, I mean, he did everything right. 
I mean, he got his head down, he was passing it into the net, he wasn't taking a blast. Hit the post, I mean, coming off the inside of the post. Mm. But it even bounced and, uh, at the post it, it's, that uh, yeah. You know, and it's just one of those things, but unfortunately, the, I mean, and, and at that stage, the crowd was right behind the court team. There was a great excitement yeah. in the atmosphere, and there was a feeling of an upset. But all of a sudden, the atmosphere has died, mm. you know, and, and by the time the, the well, half-time the whistle went... Well, I mean, gone a little bit stunned, have they? Oh, we have another yeah. commercial break coming up. Back after that, with the second half of Kerry and Cork. An article, lads, in the Sunday Independent last week, and the first two paragraphs, lads, is what every player in this room will be feeling coming up. He says, there are no hiding places in Crow Park. You either have it or you don't. And at five o'clock this evening, one dressing room will be filled with joy, pride and hope, while the other will be the home of the mother of all sorrows. Yeah, the Dubs, the documentary, last year's football championship campaign, a scene from behind closed doors. That's on RT2 television. That's next Wednesday night. You can see that at 11.25. Now, earlier in the day, in our first live match here, of course, we had the Ulster final. That won by Armagh on a scoreline against Donegal of 1-9 to 9 points because of the tightness of the Ulster players. The captain, Paul McGrain, who scored the goal, and some of his colleagues there as well. The geezer is there in the shot also, and Oshin Conville, who set a record today in Croke Park in scores in Ulster Championship. That was a little bit earlier on. It's half-time here in Killarney. Um, just have a look quickly, Colm, at one clip from the first half of Kerry. When Kerry were actually going badly, when Cork's tails were up, and this kind of, for, for me, summed up like what Kerry were at at that stage in their heads. Kick out by, by Murphy that basically went nowhere in the end. Yeah, well, it was, uh, Murphy's kick outs have been, you know, great quite catch. good. Yeah, it was a great a brilliant guy. catch yeah, then. by Brosnan. And he gets it off to Darrow O'Shea. And, and Kerry have kicked, tried to kick a lot of ball up into this left corner to where Paul O'Connor is making yeah. this debut. And he's got some and lost a lot. But uh, I, Kerry would be razzled at that time. And it reminded me of the game last year against Limerick in the first half where they went, I think, all, they scored a goal early and then they went a whole half without a score after mm. that. They were a bit like that, a bit messy. And, you know, and they had no rhythm about their play. And Cork were getting in among them. And they were getting a bit ratty here as well. Now... Unfortunately, Cork have lost the man and they've put themselves under real pressure. If they were coming out in 15 against 15, even with a three-point lead, we'd have a right match. Unfortunately, now it would appear as if they've opened the gate for Kerry to win it. You know, maybe not. Maybe yeah. we'll see a real battling rebel performance. And they have big support here today and giving them great encouragement because what they are seeing from the players is what they expect. At least flat-out effort. And mm. that's the minimum they should expect from their side. OK, well, we've shown the presentation column of the trophy, the cup in Ulster and in Crow Park earlier on. We've had a presentation, of course, already here in Killarney as well. That, of course, was the Munster Minor Championship. That uh, involved Kerry and uh, Tipperary, in actual fact, involved in that. The victory... To Kerry in the end. This is one of the goals that they scored, the goal that they scored in that match. Oh, good yes. exciting game, well taken goal. And that's Paddy Curran from Waterville. There you go. Delighted player and delighted colleagues. Monster Winner champions here in Munster. Joe, you know, it's looking too obvious now that you say yeah. Kerry are going to go on and win the game because they have a huge breeze behind them. Will it be as simple as that? Yeah, but it's more than that. Like, one of the reasons I think maybe they started so slowly is they haven't had a competitive match since the league final. You know, they've had a couple of really meaningless games in Munster and Cooper hasn't scored from playing the Munster nope. Championship to date yeah. and he is such a great player I, mean, I think he's the greatest player playing yes. really football at the moment and it's hard to imagine that he won't score four or five points in the second half yeah. Kerry already their defence seems to have started to get the measure of the Cork attack Cork don't have a cohesive structure and it would really be a miracle, in my view, if Cork were to pull through and win it. Do you know? Yeah, but are we are we being a little bit unfair to Cork here now in making it as obvious that we're basically saying to ourselves, look, they were going grand. Something's after going against them. They're banjikes now. Yeah, well, of course, Other all good that. teams when they face adversity, you know, Joe questioned what Donegal would be like in adversity in the first game. And for me, Donegal fought very hard to the end and, you know, probably improved their, themselves, their own inner oh, belief yeah. that they may come back and go further because, you know, the way they played against a really good Armagh side. Now, what Cork need is to come out and, and even if they don't win the match, 
but they need to come out here with their honour intact from this game so that, you know, they're going to go into the hat tonight and they have a great chance, but they need to come out here and fight like dogs for the second half. But as well as that, I mean, last night, with similar situation, well, not similar, but nonetheless, Leash were winning by three points at half time. Yeah. In the studio, we were saying, well, maybe they're not going to hold on, and they did. Yeah, but so you, you have to think of the respective pedigrees. I mean, the most accurate yardstick of Kerry was the league semi final and the league final. When In the league final, I thought they looked awesome against Galway when Galway threw the kitchen sink at them. I mean, Tyrone were dead men walking. Sooner or later, they were going to lose in this championship. They've lost so many of their stars. I mean, Connor Gormley capping it off recently. Stephen O'Neill trying to play but not really fit. You know, they were dead men walking, and you could see there was yeah. almost a relief when they lost. Someone was going to beat them. At least they did play with great passion and all of that, and they deserve great credit for that, particularly the way they were humbled against the dubs. Yeah. But this is a different thing yeah. today. I mean, Kerry are, it's, it's pedigree team with their full team out, the team they want to pick. Sure. And that's ju just a reminder, by the way, Colin, the, the teams obviously that lose today won't be in the hat tonight because that's for another day because they'll be the losing provincial that's final. Right. But wait, that <laughs> just reminds me that we do have our two draws live later on here on the programme. That's for the uh, Harding quarterfinals and also for the next round in the football championship. You can see those uh, live a few minutes after we have the presentation of the trophy here in Killarney. I'm still not convinced, Colin O'Rourke, that it won't be a Cork player up there in that stand accepting the trophy here this evening. Well, you know, you're you can romantic in, in, include me out in that assessment. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, you know, we're the doubting Thomases here. Maybe you believe in Billy well, Morgan. Well, the other thing about investment. Kerry is they can score very quickly. You know, how many times have we been in a match? Not all of a sudden, they just obliterate you in the mm. space. And, I mean, if you think back to the All-Ireland semi-final last year between Cork and Kerry, you know, I mean, in the first half, it's been uh, virtually yeah. impossible to get the ball forward. But now that Kerry are going to be able to open up and play expansive football, I mean, people like Cooper, who are expert forwards, all they've got to do is to loft it up into the breeze. 50 yeah. metres out, it's not going to be a problem with that wind. And it's hard to see how Kerry will... Yeah, well, Cork aren't going to score more than, more than four or five points, yeah. probably. And, yeah. you know, Kerry then have to score Brian's a goal in five or six to win the game. And it, it's most likely that Kerry will win from this position. Yeah. Owen Sexton's coming off the court, by the way, and Dunhoe, Connor corner forward, is going off. Right. Yeah, I suppose they're bringing, on an extra, they're bringing on an extra defender, but uh, you know, from a Kerry point of view, they'd be very unhappy. Their forward line hasn't functioned. Now, they haven't got up much ball to them, but young Paul O'Connor has been fed by the ball and has lost it. Uh, you know, Jack O'Connor has been chopping and changing this forward line, and it's not really working at the moment. And he's probably looking for the quarter final and thinking, you know, we need to get a bit more cohesion. There must Paul get somebody to take the pressure off. Mm -hmm. I understand that Paul O'Connor has gone off uh, on the Kerry team <laughs> as well. <laughs> that you just have mentioned to him. Yes. And I think it's they might have given him, well, they might have given, they might have given him an opportunity in the second half. I mean, a young player like that mm. coming into the championship, he should keep it very simple. You yeah. Know, the first three or four balls he get, just get it laid off and work and work and work. But he, he tried to be more inventive than that. But I thought they may have given him a shot in the second half with the breeze. Well, as we head back to our commentators in the second half, I think it should be noted that when the Cork team came out onto the field here, there was a real big cheer for the Cork team from their supporters. So obviously the supporters are going to get behind them and, and wish them well and hope that they come through on this. Kerry supporters, of course, have the same ambitions. Who's going to win? Let's see. Ger Canning and Martin Carney again. So, Kerry with the breeze. Second 35 minutes to get underway. And uh, Darren O'Sullivan has come in in place of Paul O'Connor, as you heard Owen Sect has come in for Dunnock O'Connor, who has had to be sacrificed because of the dismissal of Anthony Lynch. So it's 14 against 15, Cork down a man since the 32nd minute. In case you've come in late, 7 points to 4, Cork leading. So who's going to take the Monster Cup? for 2004 referee Joe McQuillan from Cavan checking that everything is ready the crowd are just waiting for the ball to be thrown in here we go so can Kerry now use their additional player Kieran Donaghy trying to get the ball away it stopped here Pierce O'Neill yet to really impose himself on the game Nicholas Murphy's worked really hard this is Owen Sexton now working it up Nicholas Murphy again Again, busy as ever. O'Neill playing it back. Jerry Cavanaugh this time letting it fly in. Yeah, Kerry just, trying to break. Yeah, just a comment on the extra man. It appears to me that Michael McCarthy is the extra man and he's playing between the full back line and the and the half back line at the moment. It looks to be it all right. Once again. Cork break forward here with a lot of purpose. Spillane kicking it in there, but it's 
easily seized on by Mark O'Shea, the left corner back. Dara O'Shea now. Yeah, they're keeping their extra player in and around the full back line just to make absolutely sure. Declan O'Sullivan now. Down towards Darren O'Sullivan. Using his pace against Michael Prout. Exciting the Kerry crowd. Tricks. Uh, the referee awarding the free kick. Calling across the guilty party. Little tangle of legs in all of that. Michael Prout getting himself... A yellow card, so... Or is it a yellow? No, it's a, it's a ticking, it's a ticking. Beg your pardon. Just a ticking. Hard to see the colours here in the bright sunlight this afternoon. Yeah, but again, what you saw that time was an example of Darren O'Sullivan's incisive direct running. Maybe it's something that was absent in the first half. Again, blinding speed that time. Again, that earned the free. James Masters being kept to one side by Mark O'Shea. Still attending to Darren O'Sullivan who's one of those young players coming in to try and make a major impact this season, as he did last year as well. This the run again here. Michael Prout caught for pace here. In the end, there was a tangle. Down he went. Yeah, he went down pretty heavily there, all right, Jerry. He was tripped from behind, and again, in the tangle of legs and bodies there. He may have got a belt in the ribs and in the head, and he actually could be quite badly hurt. Well, they want to make sure that he's up and running immediately. Didn't think Paul O'Connor did that terribly badly in the first half. He looked very game and willing. There's a yellow card this time, and it's to James Masters. Score of four points in the game so far. Not too sure what James Masters did to deserve that card. I think there might have been a late challenge, actually, once the ball was cleared there from James Masters. But again, just down in the Corkville forward line at the moment, the two lads that are left in there, that's Fintan Gould and James Masters need to have an awful lot of movement in this half to actually support their outfield players. So four yellow cards and one red dished out by the match official. And Darren O'Sullivan's OK. Just making sure that he has plenty of time. Find his feet again. And so the free will be taken by Brian Sheehan. This to put just two between them. And it's a relatively easy free from Brian Sheehan's point of view. Calmly stroked over the crossbar. And seven points to five the position. Is this the big march now? The big move on the part of the champions here in Munster? The march of the kingdom. Well, certainly they have that wind still blowing in their favour in this half, uh, Ger, as well as that the numerical advantage should be something that they'll build on. But again, they, they would like to see a little bit more clean ball being won around the middle of the field because we can blame the carry forwards maybe for this, that and the other, but they haven't got any kind of a coherent supply at all in the first half. The Cork full back line reading Michael Proud, Graham Canty, who is picking up Gooch, and Michael Shields is in there as well, picking up Brian Sheehan. Meanwhile, it's Kevin McMahon from Carberry Rangers. Moving it from left half forward. He's got an unmarked player. It's Masters. Trying to steal a march. Great block down. And carry back their battle and win it and get it away. I think it was Mark O'Shea who made the block. And they work it away out of defence, Kerry. Tom O'Sullivan was involved. Well, that was a very good opportunity. Didn't favour James Masters on his right boot. Out to Dara O'Shea. Oh, that's a bad ball from Dara, straight to Pierce O'Neill. Well, he has been excelling in training. Aidan O'Mahony is on a yellow card already. And the referee going across to have a word. He's shown him the black card. And that's uh, that's one of your favourite moves, isn't it? The well, yellow to black. Well, I can't stand that one, to be honest with you. If a player fouls a second, I'm having got a yellow to my mind. If it's if it's bad enough to warrant any kind of a, a, a censure, then it should be a second yellow and off. But just going back to that uh, goaling chance there a couple of moments ago, Ger, uh, James Masters had the opportunity just before that, actually, to play the ball across to his midfield uh, uh, colleague, Derek Kavanagh. He hesitated for a moment. The, the opportunity was lost, and again, a great opportunity to get a goal was lost. But Cork have the chance of tagging on an eighth point now from this. But it's 40 metres out for James Masters. 
breeze may have dropped a little bit just to look at the flags it's nicely delivered and it is over the bar another one for james masters that's five points now for the Nemo rangers player and cork go back to a three-point lead once again yeah, maybe we can be critical of him, maybe not giving the pass or converting that last opportunity he got. But his place kicking today has been masterful, no pun intended. And again, like he's under a lot of pressure actually at the moment because he's the one scoring outlet that they have. Dermot Murphy again trying to place his kick out into the hands of uh, Kieran Donaghy. And the referee saw a foul being committed, a knee was raised. Kieran Donaghy's having words with his goalkeeper as well, I think about the placing of the kick yeah and Pierce O'Neill this time just watching he comes up uh, actually he tripped him accidentally it must be said and again the following through he stood on him but that was accidental also but again the initial trip is what the referee blew for Derek Cavanaugh ready to hit this one looking for some running from Kevin McMahon Tomas O'Shea tracking him great block down again that's brilliant Galvin that time, but Cork have it in the follow-up. It's Jer Spillane constantly powering his way through from centre-half back during this game, and the referee seeing a foul, and it's going to be another free in, this time for Cork. Player is down there, and the man in trouble is Kieran Donaghy, who's got a ticking already. And Kieran Donaghy been spoken to by the referee, and he's issued a yellow. So that's three yellow cards now to Kerry players. The latest of them, Kieran Donaghy from Austin Stacks. Yeah, and again, talk about manufacturing of really that time. Ger Spillane drove hard at, at Kieran Donaghy. And again, I'm not saying he died, but he made most of the opportunity to earn a free. Just watch it. OK, Kieran Donaghy probably got in his way and obstructed him. But uh, fair play to Ger Spillane. He made the most of it. I think if that were in basketball, they'd say he had his feet well established. <laughs> well, you know that's the sport that he plays. <laughs> and you know basketball a lot better than I do, Ger. <laughs> so it's I James Masters ready to hit this one. 22 metres out. Good strike. Once again, it draws a white flag, if somewhat belatedly. And Masters has cracked over another. Nine points to five. Yeah, he's holding his nerve admirably. Again, from a difficult angle, that one for a left for the kicker. Took it confidently, and again, just watching him merging on the players around him. Cork have come up here full of spark, full of fury, and full of passion today. Well, Kerry started the second half as though they really meant business and trying to cut incisions into the Cork defence time and again they go for another one here down towards Colin Cooper looking for his first point from play under pressure drops it short Alan Quirk out here to Pierce O'Neill one of the Ahada players did really well against Neville Ball in the county championships recently got the call up after that Derek Cavada back towards Michael Prout ticked a little while ago not a good ball from Prout for his own centre back Cher Spillane in difficulty here with the rating Owen Brosnan back once again to Gooch Cooper's kick into the centre held here by Brian Sheehan way up into the air looks to have the accuracy the umpire's not going to and wave the white flag great shot by Brian Sheehan wonderful fourth point by the number 14 from St Mary's and it's nine points to six and that's a bit more like it from Kerry it's a handsome point if ever there was a handsome point Jerry. again an unforced error by the court defence coming out with the ball again Owen Brosnan intercepted the kick give it back sensibly to Sheehan who launched an absolute skyscraper great score Michael Shields now from that short kick out what are the options did he foul the ball the Kerry fans thought he did allowed to continue Jerry Spillane now not for the first time another thundering run through but this time too many steps taken free to carry fascinating match the champions being led all the way down to Gooch spells danger into Darren O'Sullivan spells even more danger taking on Prout holds his nerve and kicks it over the bar Darren O'Sullivan's first point since making his introduction at the start of the second half and the fans are enjoying it in the wonderful sunshine nine points to seven Cork still leading 
Yeah, but just watch those instincts again of Cooper. The quality of the pass into space that time for Darren O'Sullivan left the actual eventual score easy enough for him. But the, just his passing ability and his, uh, you know, the eye for an opening is what set that up. Well, there we saw Colum Cooper, the leader of the attack. Yeah, very much so. Alan Quirk playing in what is his fourth championship match. Huge one up there, everybody in contesting, one back by Kerry again, doing well on the kickouts now, Dara O'Shea, again pinpoint accuracy to Dara o Darren O'Sullivan, back to Galvin, dodging around, but it's still some 60-70 metres out, good support play however by Aidan O'Mahony, now it's Brian Sheehan, was it thrown, there's a player on the ground, referee says play away, Sheehan once again, he kicked a huge one earlier on, well, I think he thought his luck was in, fancied his chances, and that will really frustrate the other players around him if he's going to do that time and again. This was the earlier point, and I suppose if you could kick with this kind of accuracy from 45 metres out once, probably feel you can do it a second time. Yes, he's the most beautiful style of kicking, Ger. So languid, so uh, attractive, just strokes the ball beautifully, and again, launch, gets great accuracy and distance into his kicks. Well, our panel were telling us that there was a certain inevitability about this second half, that Kerry were inevitably going to win it, eventually. Will it come to pass? Let's wait and see. 15 against 14, remember that. Jess Milan for the 14 men. Owen Sexton, wearing number 27. Here's Pierce O'Neill. Into Derek Cabana, Cork's captain this year. O'Neill again, looking for a free player. It's McMahon. The wing forward, trying to pick out Finton Gould from this year's under-21 team. Hopeless case, unable to keep it in play. Nine ball to carry. Yeah, that kind of conceding of possession is again desperate altogether from a court point of view. Certainly that time, uh, Gould was given far too much to do from the pass for McMahon. Paul Galvin taking on Sexton. Oh, brushing aside the challenge with some ease. Beautiful ball across here towards Cooper. And Graham County standing its ground as he's done so many times in the past. He's fouled, free out to Cork. And listen to the uh, rival expressions of joy and anger from the fans following that decision. Nicholas Murphy now. Dishing it off to Pierce O'Neill. McMahon once again taking it up. Trying to wriggle his way forward past him also Shea. Almost lost control of the football into space, and that's where Kerry have the extra man. Mike McCarthy's back there, so to Aidan O'Mahony. This is McCarthy, seems to be the extra player. Galvin once again to set sail. Hustling his way forward here. Declan O'Sullivan back. That was Galvin, almost transferred it to himself. Under pressure, enormous pressure. Cork battle and win it back to Masters. Owen oh, Sexton now into space. Gould is ahead of him. Finton Gould, 20 years of age from McCroom. Taking on his man. Again, Masters available. Derek Kavana. Nothing given away too easily. In the end, they try to work it in to a scoring opportunity. But the final shot doesn't yield anything for Cork. It's their third wide, which isn't half bad. Three for Kerry as well. And the kick was by Owen Sexton. Cork and Kerry mingling in the crowds. Cork and Kerry tussling on the field. It's been the way for so many years. Hots up a little bit with Galvin there and Kieran O'Connor. Galvin ready to kick this one. Loose players. A little bit of tiredness. Inevitable. Kerry pressing forward. Aidan O'Mahony. They're two behind. Wins a free. A little bit of a fist use that time, I think. And it was Pierce O'Neill who was the guilty party in the view of the referee. Just on a couple of occasions there during the second half, when Paul Galvin, Aidan O'Mahony in that case, and Darren O'Sullivan have run hard at the Cork defence, they've actually been able to draw fouls and to stretch the Cork defence. But the direct ball that's going in has been well controlled by the likes of Canty in the full back line and Kieran O'Connor. So running at the Cork defence seems to be the way through for Kerry at the moment. And this will put just one between them. And that has drifted to the left, the umpires waited, 
It's wide, definitely. No question about it, a miss by Brian Sheehan, very untypical in the form that he's been in this season. Four points for the day so far. Came in with figures of 16 points in eight championship matches up to now for Jack O'Connor. Billy Morgan and Jack trying to organise their forces. It's like a game of chess. They have 14 pace, pieces in one case, 15 in another. Yeah, one other comment actually that's worth making, Jared. The wind isn't as strong in the second half as it was in the first half, and it has got very hot out there. Fisted by Darrow Shea, but the break's picked up by Cork. Kieran O'Connor. Back it comes to Canty once again. Thundering forward, dispossessed by Galvin. Good little challenge that time by Paul Galvin. And Cork forced into the concession of uh, a free here. But that was good work by Paul Galvin. Quick hands. Look where Gooch is, way back. The managers look on. Thundering challenge over there. It's by Pierce O'Neill. It was on Declan O'Sullivan. Yeah, and I think what happened in that situation there, Graham Canty actually was caught out right in the middle of the field. There were two carry forwards to one court defender that time. Pierce O'Neill in trying to get back, panicked a little bit and give away the free. Declan little Sullivan leaving it there for Colum Cooper to take. It'll suit a left-footed kicker. And this, once again, an opportunity to put just one between them. Well, the booing you're hearing is coming in, but Colum Cooper will make little of it, I'm sure. Oh, he's missed it, he's missed it. Well, the Boo Boys just getting the better of Colin Cooper. And it remains nine points to seven. He's not having his best day, but Jerry, again, he has had his difficulties during the year, it must be said. Anybody who's watching knows that, you know, a bereavement and a family can take an awful lot out of a lad. And again, I don't think he has found his form yet, but again, he does not deserve the booing. He's the finest footballer playing Gaelic football at the moment, the person anybody would wish to go into to see play. And again, OK, his form may have dipped temporarily, but when he comes back, certainly he'll be the marquee player he, he uh, once again. Yes, yeah, sadly, his dad died during the year, his number one fan, I'm sure. And he was here watching him in the Munster final last year, which was in Pork E. Cueve. This is Sean O'Brien. Referee wants to hold up the play. A little bit of paperwork to be done. Free to be taken from the correct position for starters. And the referee is calling back Pierce O'Neill. Well, he would have been speaking to him a little while ago. And it's not O'Neill, it's Donaghy, who's already on a yellow. He's got a ticking, and he's got a second yellow, and he's got a red, and he's off. Both sides are down to 14. Whatever Joe McQuillan saw, it has resulted in a second yellow. Watch it again. See, the was there an elbow used or a arm? I don't think there was. That's a very, very harsh sending off, I think. He just seemed to be in a regular tussle for the ball. Maybe the referee saw from a different angle than we did, but I thought it sending off in that case was most undeserved. Well, that is hard to understand, but it's leveled the match of 14 all. Cork challenge, still trying to press forward in the corner there, over near the Billy Kirby corner, as they call it here. Kieran O'Connor trying to get away. And certainly, Kieran Donaghy playing in his monster final here has every reason to feel absolutely disgusted with that decision that's what it does actually it, has the, it evens out things again numerically and it actually it gives Cork you know puts them back on parity in terms of numbers and again the fact that they're, they're winning at the moment by two points it'll give them every encouragement now to go and try and close the game out well they've been the more encouraging of the teams in terms of their attitude their willingness their desire to win this game it they refused to believe, you know, what everybody was telling them, that they had no chance. Yeah, it has been refreshing. There's great credit to Billy Morgan and his backroom staff that he's managed to get that controlled fury into the game. At, at the back, they have been, you know, the essence of stickability. The forwards have been moving very well, and the midfield certainly has worked a dream, considering they had nine new players from last year's All-Ireland semi-final. It's a credit to them. One of the newcomers, Donald O'Connor, might have taken this one from that left-hand side with his right, but it's Masters with his left... It's a very, very awkward angle for him, too difficult indeed, unable to measure it between the posts, and so it becomes Cork second wide of the second half, their fourth in all. Still 9-7, 15 minutes to play, maybe a little 
more than that with stoppages and so on. The champions having quite a fight on their hands. If they didn't realise that Cork were going to be up for it at this stage, they must realise that. Cherse Bilan waiting for the breaking Kevin McMahon to come through. Owen Sexton over there. It's Tommaso Shea going back, battling with Fintan Gould. Gould right on the end line trying to stop his progress. It needs the goalkeeper, David Murphy. Fascinating contest now. 14 against 14 and another high elbow that time. And the referee blowing the whistle and it's going to be free out quickly taken. Seamus Moynihan getting on with it. Way downfield. Galvin switching it forward in here towards Darren o O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan holding it up once again. Galvin coming in, trying to get by Kieran O'Connor, beating Michael Proud as well. Everybody argues about the decision, but it's over the bar, and it's Paul Galvin who kicks his first under enormous pressure. A one-point game in Killarney. Cork 9, Kerry 8, and Paul Galvin under a lot of pressure. And the goalkeeper telling the umpires it was wide. No way, it was straight between the posts. Very good score indeed. Yeah, and again, as we said already, Jared, this half again, when when the likes of Galvin, when the likes of uh, Owen Brosnan and Darren O'Sullivan run at them, they seem to be getting more joy. Again, a great drive forward that time from uh, Paul Galvin resulted in the score. Well, theoretically, there should be a bit more space out of the field right now. Tired bodies pushing. Too many carry players going for the one ball. Free quickly taken to Sean O'Brien. O'Brien trying to get inside, Seamus Moynihan, he's on a yellow as well, has to be careful. O'Brien pressing forward, it's Darrow Shea coming after him next. Made a connection, all right, referee says no foul. Darrow playing in his 11th final today, free quickly taken for Kerry. Out to Mark O'Shea, trying to skip away from a couple of court challenges. They work it out here once again. Aidan O'Mahony running into a stiff test over there. A stiff test is presented by Derek Kavanagh. Referee having a word with the court captain. Yeah, but you can see Kerry trying to up the pace at the moment, trying to get a greater tempo to the game. They haven't been able to get any rhythm or any kind of uh, flow to, to what is normally a very, very, uh, you know, enterprising way of playing. But in that case there, there's definitely a foul. I don't think, in fairness to Derek Kavna, he, he did anything on tour there. His, his leg was caught, I think, underneath uh, his opponent. Last August, Martin, Kerry 119. Cork nine points. That's right. Some change. Some change indeed, but the main thing is the cha the change of. Okay, they have nine new players. I know Cork have, but the change in attitude is very noticeable. They're really playing as if their heart, you know, their lives depend on it today. They've conceded eight points to Kerry, but that's not half bad. The defence has tightened quite a lot. Darren O'Sullivan. Brosnan kicking, and it's outside, but it's off a defender. It's the game's first 45. Owen Brosnan was winding himself up dangerously for that one. Yeah, that's heroic defending again from the court defence. I, I don't know who it was. I think it was probably Jers Falan who got the block in there. But again, just watch Jers Falan coming through there very, very well. OK, it could have deflected it oh. into the net, but it typifies and, and it reflects the type of effort that Cork are putting into it. Well, Cork had a close run thing in the first half. A shot from Donico, Connor off the butt of the upright, and Brosnan wasn't too far away there. Here's Brian Sheehan to put the sides level if he can at nine points apiece. Straight over the bar. Listen to the cheer. There are ten minutes to go and they're level for the first time in this year's Monster Football Final. I think Kerry are starting to sense it, Jerry. You can see them just getting a little bit of more impetus into their game. You know, that just extra experience that they have, I think, will allow them now to kind of push on from here. But it's taken them an awful long time to get rid of the rustiness and get uh, some kind of rhythm and impetus into their game. Well, Jack O'Connor will be happy with the second half there alongside Johnny Cullity. Hawk are about to make a change. Coming into the action is Kevin O'Sullivan from Island Rovers. And going off is Sean O'Brien. Sean O'Brien has worked his socks off. Fresh man in there as Billy Morgan takes the opportunity to use his five subs, or at least to get through some of them anyway. Means that O'Sullivan has gone in to full forward 
and Fintan Gould, who can be a much better player on the half line, has come out to right half forward. Yeah, you must credit Shawnee Bryan with the work that he gave through the game. In fact, that last solo running made down the field two or three minutes ago, I think, eventually emptied the tank for him. But he's been outstanding for Cork, and again, it's just a bit of freshening up that Billy Fields has needed. Hefty challenges there. That was Jers Milan getting in to win that battle. But it's Paul Galvin, point scorer a little while ago, trying to get inside Sexton one more time. Sexton trying to keep him at bay, out in the perimeters. Little ball inside here. Brosnan was contesting. Cork going for everything. Game tied. Once again, it is Michael Prout getting the ball away. Good support play over there. McMahon trying to take it out. He was fouled. Free to Cork. A general comment, Jer, Cork are going for every 60, you know, 40, 60 ball, never mind every, any 50, 50 ball. They're just going with a greater commitment than Kerry Art uh, during, uh, you know, so far in, in the game. And you've mentioned the sunshine and the heat. It has got warmer and warmer during the second half in particular. Kieran O'Connor being attended to, one of the players being attended to anyway. There's also a requirement here to uh, get Jer Spillan back into the match. That's uh, Kieran O'Connor there from Ahada. Yeah, just watching Kieran O'Connor within hard that time again for a ball that really wasn't his to win. But again, it, it, as I said, it typifies the bravery of the Cork lads. And again, he took a belt in the, in, in the mouth for his troubles. They believe in the cause. Oh, very much so. They, what, you know, again, the spirit that they have brought to the game today and this, this sense of we can do is kind of, you know, all prevalent to the whole team at the moment. And again, Canty has led well from the back. The two midfielders, Nicholas Murphy and Derek Kavanagh, have been consistent all through. Been impressed with Ger Spillanger. He's driven forward at every available opportunity. And up front, James Masters is keeping the scoreboard ticking over. Yeah, I think you mentioned most of the key performers there from Cork's point of view, from Kerry's point of view. They're looking, as always, to Darrow Shea and Seamus Moynihan to provide the leadership out there. There's a title to be won here now in the next seven minutes. Is it going to be Kerry, the champions, with Mark O'Shea here from Unveldot? He's 60 metres out. Derek Kavanagh trying to pin a tackle on him. It comes in the end to Paul Galvin, holding it up once again. Brian Sheehan now, five points so far, scored in the match. Outside of the boot, beautiful ball here for Colin Cooper. Just one point scored, that from a free. This is Declan O'Sullivan, back once again to Cooper. And Cooper holds it because there was a foul just ahead of him. Player on the ground, Declan O'Sullivan. Yeah. It'll be a free in. Yeah, a little bit of panic that time on the part of Graham Canty. Took uh, Declan Sullivan out of it unnecessarily. So, again, gets a black tick for his troubles. Uh, Colin Cooper was winding up a kick that time at goals. But, again, just that, you know, you would expect it a little bit more for an experienced player in, getting away, in giving away a free like that. Well, this is the moment now where Kerry can go in front. There are six minutes to play. Brian Sheehan kicking. It's going off the post and it's gone left and it's gone wide. Two misses in the last few frees for Brian Sheehan. And it's still nine points apiece. Yeah, he'll be disgusted with that because normally he's a very reliable place kicker. And again, we commented earlier on about how, you know about the style he has. That time, you know, he should have pointed that one. Some match, so much has happened in it. Six one ahead, Cork at one stage playing with the wind. Man sent off then. Kerry come back, get some scores from freeze before half time. And now so evenly poised. Very late in the contest. Cork win the free this time. Good work by Nicholas Murphy. What's the bet in the draw, Jared? It was 9-1 this morning, the bookie shop. <laughs> Graham Canty took that one, but the referee has shown the notebook to one of the Kerry players. Can't make it out from here, just who he's pointing at. Free taken by Masters for Cork, inside there towards Vinton Gould. Rises in the air, but if the ball was hanging there for a little while. It's Kerry who taking it out. The foul is on to Molso Shea. Free rapidly taken. Out it comes inevitably to Paul Galvin. Works so diligently, so industriously, outside of the boot again, inside here. Colin Cooper laying it off here for Brian Sheehan. This time looking for a winner. This time he might have got it. This time it's over the bar. Kerry lead in the Monster Final for the first time. Six points for that man there, Brian Sheehan from St Mary's.
Kerry 10, Cork 9, wonderful enterprising play. The Gooch was involved as supplier, but the finish supplied by Sheehan, magnificently over. That's a wonderful score, Jerry. Again, the trinity of players involved, Galvin to Gooch, Gooch immediate transfer, and again a delightful kick once again from Brian Sheehan, whose kicking has been a joy to watch. But it's there for the winning for both of these teams right now. It can also be saved. Declan O'Sullivan. Suddenly there's more purpose, more creativity in what Kerry can come up with. Every time they carry it deep into the Cork defence, make those cuts, they seem to somehow create some havoc and create a certain element of tension and danger. Cork keeping them on the edges, Kerry holding possession, but holding the lead. It's Tomas O'Shea. Inside to Declan O'Sullivan. Cutting in from the left-hand side, trying to get it on the right. He fouled the ball, took too many steps. Free out to Cork, who want to get the ball down the field quickly with three minutes remaining. Yeah, a lot of the Cork players are out on their feet at the moment, a result of the huge effort they have expended. And that little bit of extra class that Kerry have is counting right now. Cork with number 21, Conor McCarthy, making a late entrance into the match. And the player who seems to be going off is uh, Pierce O'Neill, I think. Yeah, just one point actually is worth mentioning, Jared. Cork haven't scored since the eighth minute of the half. And that's a huge, huge fallow period, even though they've had some good attacking opportunities since then. Cork with two points, in fact, during the second half. The breeze was not as big a factor. It was still a factor, but not quite as strong, we think, as it was in the opening 35 minutes. Cork also bring in David Niblock, his father, the former Derry player Mickey Niblock, is here to watch his son in action. Very late changes now. Vinton Gould has been taken off. Alan Quirk. Cork need to win it. Kerry need to keep them at bay, and it's Nicholas Murphy who has it. Free awarded. Derry Cavada kicking it in here. This is the substitute. Kevin O'Sullivan releasing it quickly into Kevin McMahon and there's a foul committed by Tomas O'Shea it's a free in it gives Cork a reasonably straightforward chance of leveling up the match once again they look to James Masters we're in the 69th minute Tomas O'Shea forced to drag back Kevin McMahon that time and Joe McCullough in quickly to whistle and the referee's got to go across and have words with Tom Shea, but more paperwork to be done. So the yellow card issued to Kerry's number five. All eyes now, however, on James Masters. Six points so far for Masters. Six for Brian Sheehan as well. All bar one of Masters, I think, coming from Freeze. This is a crucial one, and that's over the bar, and the teams are level, level for the second time, and we're in the 69th minute, and there are going to be three added minutes. Three minutes to live on one's nerves if you're a Cork or a Kerry fan. How do you think it's going to finish up? <laughs> well, I don't know, again, the old cliche possession is vital from this kick-out, and it must be said that in the last couple of minutes, Nicholas Murphy has caught some great ball around the middle of the park. Kerry also introducing a fresh face. To also Shea, I think, withdrawn. That's another good catch in the centre of the field by Kevin McMahon. Ger Spillan, who's been excellent, really, really good at centre half back. This is Derry Cavan, who's led the way for Cork. Kicked ahead there by David Niblock. This is James Masters, ready to take on Mark O'Shea. Is there a winner for one of these teams? Cork trying to press home. Again, Kerry trying to keep them out there on the perimeters. This is Conor McCarthy. Drop for this match. Kicked forward here. Dangerously in, it's Spillan who was in there looking for a winner. The centre-half back had gone all the way forward as Masters was kicking. Didn't quite come off, it's still 10 against 10, that's 10 points to 10. Ger Spillan trying to apply some finish. 
The great thing about being inexperienced here, you know very little about fear. And these Cork lads, the younger lads in particular, have shown no fear and given no respect to Kerry's reputation today. They've taken the game from beginning to end to them and really at, at worst they deserve to get a draw out of it. It will be said afterwards, of course, that Kerry were ill-prepared because of the fact they had easy enough matches coming into this Munster final. That's the usual line that we hear. So what does it say about Munster football, I wonder? That's for another day. Right now it's Michael Shields. Nicholas Murphy fed ahead again here towards Kevin McMahon. Free taken quickly near the sideline, still in play by Michael Shields. Just about, but it was in play. Inside and there's a chance here for Kieran O'Connor, a most unlikely hero. He's looking for a free. The referee is watching. It's with Masters and Masters has kicked it high and he's put it over the bar. Incredible in stoppage time with still over a minute to play. The referee going in to contest that one and the referee is saying no point not allowed. They're going to cross the flags, I think, are they? Yes, they are. Square ball. Wait. Yeah, that seems very strange to me. I thought Masters that time took a pass from Kieran O'Connor. Maybe Kieran O'Connor threw the ball to him, I don't know. But to my mind, it was... Doesn't count anyway, this is what happened, Martin. Yeah, he may have actually just blown for, just prior to that for overcarrying. But certainly, uh, in that case, Masters squeezed a most difficult opportunity over the bar. Well, for either throwing the ball or for players in the square or for overcarrying, the referee has disallowed it anyway. But it's back once again now with David Niblock. Huge one down, once again to Kevin O'Sullivan. Great catch under pressure there by Aidan O'Mahony. They work it forward here to the tireless Galvin. Out it comes once again. Tommy Griffin over there, I think it is. Dara O'Shea. This is Michael McCarthy setting off once again in the general direction of the court goal. Everybody's after him. There's another 15 seconds of the added time to be played. Gooch has it. It's 10 against 10. It's broken there by Masters. It's regained, however, by Dara O'Shea. Incredible drama. It ends here in Kalani with the final whistle. And they'll have to do it all again. The match ends level. And it will go to a replay. A most dramatic afternoon's football. The 117th Munster football final in Kalani's. Fitzgerald Stadium finishes with the teams on level terms. Cork will have thought that they won it just moments earlier. Kerry will probably have felt that they should have won it because they have the tradition, they have the class on their side. But Cork were reading from a different script, had a really good game plan, were well prepared by that man there, Billy Morgan. But now they'll have to do it all again. It will be Porky Queen where they will meet one more time. And you can see by the warm embrace to Kieran O'Connor just how Billy feels about the efforts of his charges down there, all 20 or so who competed, and competed wonderfully. It was a terrific contest. Some game. What do you think? Most enjoyable game, I must be said, Ger. Cork took the game to Kerry from the first whistle to the last. Kerry's reputation simply kind of, I, I think, flittered a little bit today. It took quite a battering. But to be fair to Kerry, they came back into it well in the second half. Sheen kicked a couple of wonderful scores. But Cork deserved to get something out of that game today. The talking point quite clearly afterwards, Ger, will be that disallowed point in the last minute. I couldn't see on one replay what it was for. Maybe it was for over carrying prior to the ball going through the Masters. But sir, it will be a major talking point but both teams deserve great credit for a fabulous effort Kerry have a lot of improving to do Cork will look to get a second you know a second display like that again in the replay it's been a thriller in Killarney and the final score here showing that the teams finish level it's Kerry the champion still 10 Cork 10 points Very much indeed, and as the cliche goes, they'll have to do it all over again. But what a performance that was by Cork, and particularly Colin O'Rourke and Joe Brodie, after what I saw of them uh, playing Limerick down in Limerick a couple of weeks ago. I mean, they've really, really but, turned that around. But, but it was, I mean, I didn't think it was a good match. I thought it was a very bad match and very bad quality football. Genuinely, like, I mean, that just wouldn't do against better opposition. I mean, Kerry missed four terrible wides from really easy freeze in the second half. She had three and Cooper once. And I never thought I'd say this. Yeah. But Colin Cooper seems to have lost his confidence. Yeah, it wasn't, wasn't able to do anything. Say. Let's see what Jack O'Connor, the uh, Kerry manager, has to say about it all. He's with Jim Carney. Yes, thank you, Michael. Jack, thanks for staying out to talk to us. It's not easy now with uh, supporters milling all around us. But Jack, are you relieved or disappointed? Or what are your feelings? Or is it hard to put into words how you feel? Well, I, overall, I'm relieved, Jim. I don't think we played well enough to win the game. 
fairness to Cork, they gave us what we expected, ferocious battle, and I think right near the end there, would certainly have settled for a draw. And did you think that you were a point down in the last minute, Jack? Well, it was obviously wide, I mean, you know by the reaction of the players, it was wide, but they had the breaks together, I think Cork, Cork were very good on the day, we knew they'd be good, because they were coming down in a great situation, so the, the roles will be re reversed next week. I think Cock could be fair with some open parky creeps, so we'll see how they do there. Yes, that last one apparently Jack was over the bar, but disallowed, the referee disallowed it for a throw ball possibly, yeah. yeah okay. So we all look ahead to the replay, Jack. Both teams, you, you especially, will look for improvement, and I'm sure Cork, we'll Cork will feel that they can do it again. Absolutely, we need, we need, we need to play better. Uh, we were very sluggish in the last 15 minutes, they cleaned us out around the middle of the field on breaks. So we, we, we'll just have to get a bit more from that area. OK, Jack, I know you've lost your mind, very gracious to stay out and talk to us. Thanks, Jack. Thank you very much indeed. With that, back to Michael. Jim Carley uh, with Jack O'Connor, the Kerry manager there, clearly a little bit bewildered by uh, the way that his team were given loads of it by Cork all day long. Absolutely, but like, I think ultimately this performance, if, if Kerry can go on and win or Cork go on and win, this will be the best benefit and the best preparation possible for the All-Ireland quarter-final because we've seen Kerry teams over the last four or five years having easy Munster finals and then when they really got a tough game in Crow Park, they weren't fit for it. So, like I'd say Jack O'Connor won't be unduly upset about getting an extra game, but I think the provided main... Provided they win it the next day. <laughs> provided they win it, but I think the big worry for him is Cooper is not functioning up front and there's nobody else, you know, it's the willing horse takes all the load and in this case there's no substitute for him. Yeah. OK, coming up later here on the programme, the draws live for the next round of matches in the Football and Hurling Championships. And after this commercial break, more on today's Monster Football Final. In Killarney, we have seen Cork and Kerry draw in the Monster Football Final, 10 points apiece. Colin Rourke at the start of the second half, you know, we were talking about the, uh, at half time here and the analysis was the fact that Kerry would take over. It looked like they were going to do that. Sheen got a nice point. The sub that came on, Darn O'Sullivan got a point. They seem to be taking control of the match. Yeah, I suppose Cork, though, you have to say, were heroic in the second half. And I think Jer Spillane and Nicholas Murphy in particular for me stood out. You know, they really took the fight, but the Kerry at times had plenty of ball and plenty of opportunity. The Gooch a bit off song, and Brian Sheehan kicked a couple of brilliant points, but he also missed a few easy frees, ones that he would expect him to get. Well, they brought up, good ones. Yeah, well, uh, Owen Brosnan on the way through, and Gooch, as you can see at times, was quite willing to lay it off. And then Brian Sheehan, you know, all you had to do in the second half there was put the ball up into the air because the, the wind was so strong. It was a breeze yeah. in the second half. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you this know... Is this is Darren O'Sullivan then? Yeah, well, Darren O'Sullivan has massive pace altogether. Just so the, when, the when uh, Kerry got the ball into him, he, he definitely caused problems. He definitely... And that was a brilliant cross-field ball from Gooch. Leaving him... I thought for a second he was going to go in for a goal there, but it was an easy point. But he definitely made a difference in the Kerry forward line, and a forward line that didn't function very well. Mm -hmm. We saw, Joe, the, I suppose the numbers levelled up in the second half, and Kerry had a player sent off. This is Kieran Don Donaghy on the second yellow. Uh, Anthony Nature, of course, had been sent off in the first half, which really gave Cork a bit of a problem. Let's have a look at Donaghy sending off. Yeah, we, we, we really weren't, weren't sure what it was for, but that referee, and um, he's, he's been at it before, he was... I mean, imagine. I mean, did he say? What? I mean, like it was. It was nothing at all. I mean, he, it was absolutely nothing. But I'll tell you what, that referee's like, right? And he did exactly the same. He has mucked up about two or three games. He, he's one of those boys. He reacts to the crowd. He reacts to the shouts of the crowd. Yeah, well, I, 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 thought he, he was, I thought it was a difficult game to referee now. But I think there's implications for Donny. I mean, what was that for? What was I that yellow card for? Well, yeah, well, is. Yeah. Generally, well, when one fella is sent off, you generally have a balancing out. Now, yeah. Donaghy, I think, has been put off before in the league, and he might miss the replay. Mm. Lynch definitely is out of the replay, yes, because obviously on a straight red, yeah. he didn't deserve it. to be sent No, I don't think Donaghy deserved it. And, and he's a very, very influential player. And it was noticeable that when he went off, Kerry were wiped out around the middle of the field totally for the last 15 out, yeah. minutes yes. of the game. Like, Cork took over there and it drove yeah. forward on every kick out and every break they were but winning. And really and truly, Cork in that last 10 minutes would be saying to themselves, we really should have won this game. Yeah, they could have. No, well, Brian Sheen got a point towards the end of the match. I thought Kerry had won. Well, most people thought Kerry had won at this stage. It looked like it was well, going to be the winner. Well, it was such a strong breeze. You were thinking, well, look, can Cork hang on because of Kerry's incompetence in the second half? But the difference between the Donegal Armagh game and this game was like night and day. This, this wasn't an intense battle at all. 
I thought Kerry was singularly poor today. I'd say it's and, the two teams know, on the field now probably wouldn't agree with you today. Well, I, know, I, know you're, I know you're saying that, but I mean, there's no point in, in, in sort of trying to dress it up beyond what it was. I thought it was a very poor game of football. And, uh, well, I would say what that else the, can you say about the, it? Like? The quality of this game, certainly to me, was inferior to the match in Crow Park. The intensity level, although they were very high, I think that the Armagh Donegal game was a, a certainly a better quality match for me today. Certainly a huge talking point. Two talking points all through the game, but right at the very end, the point was one fella said it's a point, the other one didn't. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what happened. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's probably the first time that umpires didn't agree. <laughs> yeah. We have never seen this and then, before. And then, of course, it was a typical GAA compromise. Was it a foul, I wonder, or, or it was it a, I, I, Well, to me, I it was a foul, away. first of all, by Kerry Bags, but I think the ball was kicked wide. I think it was... And that guy immediately gave a wide ball, but well, then... The, I think it, was, it, it was a GA compromise. They decided the, the, the square ball put, eventually. The umpire that put up the, the, the point flag, the white flag, looked like he was in the perfect angle to see it. But, but listen, how could it be a square well, ball? Maybe. What do you see what happened? He might have thrown it there. No, I'm not sure. No, right. He kicks it. I but think they, they I, ended up by giving a square ball. No, hmm. I think it's obvious the ball was wide. I think it was yeah. a simple case of one umpire made a mistake, yeah. put up the flag That's when he <laughs> shouldn't have. And no, total well, we, we have, we we have seen this before. How could it be a square ball? they'll be ready for us um, so it's going to be much harder next Sunday we know that but we'll be ready too there was a game really that could have gone either way you know and Cork down with the first you know I suppose 20-25 minutes you know and we were lucky that we stuck with him you know and now he's got on come in at half time three points down we were lucky but uh, the credit to us we stuck with it you know I didn't panic I suppose the experience was thrown but uh, um, I suppose we're kind of disappointed really in the, in the finish you know we thought we had chances to win this and we didn't take them but you know, I suppose we're lucky just to fight another day Tony, the bookies that carry 6-1 on favours to win this game, all the experts said was going to be a cakewalk. How did they all get it so wrong? I think uh, Cork played with extreme passion, heart, determination, dying on breaks, and uh, no less class as well, the way they played their backs were excellent. Young players who, I suppose knowing some of the players, you'd know they, they were up to it, you'd know they were good enough to play at this level, but they really did well today, and the match carry, and out did carry in most positions all over the field. I thought they were fantastic today. Joe Bradley said it was a really bad game of football, poor quality football. I Would disagree you? with him totally. I thought Joe Bradley was totally wrong there. I thought it was a good, competitive Munster final. Uh, obviously some of the finishing wasn't great at times. There was a big win there. But I thought it was fantastic football right through by Cork. I thought they played well. I think, I think they can actually do it again. I think this isn't just uh, once, once off. I think they can actually repeat that performance. Anthony, when you were watching this game with me today, you said Kerry haven't learned anything from last year. Explain. Well, it just appeared to me that you know where Kerry have struggled over the last few years is, is, is to get um, through the, the blanket defence. We saw it against uh, firstly Armagh and then against Tyrone. And today again, what Cork did very well was it put bodies behind the ball and they made it difficult for, for Kerry and you saw how slow Kerry were to bring the ball out of their own defence, overdoing hand passing, trying to slowly run through tackles and really playing under Cork's hands and you know Kerry really need to get over that if they're going to, to go on and win the All-Ireland this year and I think it was a big big downfall today for them. Would it be fair to say Kerry were there for the taking today and maybe perhaps if, if Cork were more positive in the attack they could have beaten them? Well, they certainly were there for the taking. I don't think Kerry will play as badly again the next day. Uh, Tony, you're saying that, that, that Cork can match that level I think of performance, that. and that, that's fair enough. Yeah. But you know, I would suspect that they'll face a totally different Kerry side. So many of those Kerry players today, big names, didn't perform, and they're really, really lucky to still be. Uh, yeah. to still be in the Tony, team. Cork had chances to win the game today. Cork had several chances to win the game, and I'm You've sure when they picked out a few of them. I too. have, and when they sit back, and some of them were quite controversial as well. We have two balls that were kicked that. We could say where points are where they wide, but we got through some of the VT here and we'll have a quick look at them. This is the first one, this is James Masters with a terrific game. He was parked Lone Rangers inside in the full forward line. 13 minutes into the game. He, now, was, he felt this was a point? He felt this was a point and looking, looking at the replay here, it isn't very conclusive whether it wasn't or not. But it, look, it, so it, it could have been a point, it's it actually a doubt. This definitely was a great chance. Hit the bottom of the post, like chances that Cork, if they had that, that got that goal, it, they would have really gone ahead at that and the final stage. one was probably the main talking point. Yes, here we have Seamus Moynihan fouling Kieran O'Connor. Should have been a free first of all. Kieran lashes it out. James and now, Master. initially looking at that, I was about two foot off the ground at that stage. But it was definitely wide when we see the replay. So and it, we can see by James' reaction on the ground as well. He's hitting the ground and saying, oh my God, I've missed Actually, the chance. Actually, tonight Seamus Gardner, part of Seamus Gardner, who's the referee's PR, a referee's PR guy, he said that immediately the referee and the linesman realised it was a wide yeah. and the confusion arose because the umpire in the near post signalled it as, as um, 
oh, a point. Anthony, Martin Carley said midway through the game today that Kerry were like rabbits in headlights. They were dazzled in days. Cork were very hungry. There was no question. I think um, you know, Cork had to, be that, had to be like that. They were very, very poor uh, against Limerick. Uh, got a lot of criticism for, for the lack of, of and passion and endeavour. So. You've had a and, few and when you look at that, that's uh, Sean O'Brien getting in there and winning a ball, which is no, no right to win. And you know, hunger and determination and, and will to win and Gaelic football usually manifests itself in around the middle sector when the ball is loose. And today it was Cork fellas that were were showing greater desperation, putting their bodies in the line. And, and you know, they're really Billy Morgan can be very very proud of of the, of the character and the heart. Uh, the display showed today, and really, Kerry were were very, very badly beaten in that department. But they were only beaten by three points by Kerry last year, shouldn't they? so they must have realised they had a great chance. Yeah, when they did pack, they realised they had a great. But played played against the Limerick side and didn't play well. It didn't go right for them that day. But I thought today, uh, they, along with the hard work and everything, I thought the pattern of play they had was very good. Their backs were excellent. Listen, lads, one big talking point after was Kieran Dunne. He's sending off now. What did he make of it? If he, he had a look at it again. Initial reactions? Well, looking through it, I suppose the first booking he got, he should have been booked. And uh, you must realise as well that he was involved in the incident where Anthony Lynch got sent off beforehand. But, but from, the, from what the we see here, the yes, here we have now, he was booked. This it's, is the it's, first it's one now, booking. where he kind of a body check, all right? Now, he had been ticked before this, all right? So here we have, yeah, kind of, it's very innocuous, very soft, yeah. actually. Come well, here, this, are, this we handing out yellow, are we handing out yellow well, cabs well, too well, easily? Well, this well, is baffling totally, this yeah. one here now. Just keep an eye on this. Yeah, there's absolutely he contests with nothing, the ball. There's nothing in that at all. There's and minimal contact. Well, uh, was it a foul? Yeah. You know, it's it, uh, is it a fair point to say that in, in soccer and rugby, you earn a yellow card? It's a foul. It really is a foul. Mm. Are referees handing yellow cards out a little bit softly? Depends on the ref. Yeah, it depends on the ref, and we'll see it later on. But um, certainly, I, I, I personally feel that yellow cards have been brandished for, for very, very innocuous incidents. And it's Briefly, before we go to man of the match time, uh, replay. Have the cock left behind him, Anthony? Well, you would suspect that uh, Kerry will not play as badly so you're saying again. Um, Kerry's attack was very poor, it didn't function today. Kerry to win the replay? I would be very surprised if Kerry don't up the performance Cork. and win the replay. Cork, shock me, Tony. I, I, I think Cork have the ability to do it, but they must have the same madness that they had today, dying on all those breaks, and take those scores when they get the chance. Right, that brings us to man of the match time. Contenders, Tony? Well, you could start the, nearly the, the whole Cork backline were excellent. Their midfield were excellent. James Masters was very good. Shawnee Bryan died on breaks. For Kerry, Mark O'Shea, Galvin. Uh, mainly in defence. Mainly in defence. There's not too many, of them, too, ma too many of the players from Kerry can lift their head up this evening and say they were fantastic. So, Anthony, who did he go for? Well, we reckon that it had been such a long time since uh, Spillane got a Sunday game man of the match. <laughs> we thought it was only right and proper that Jerry Spillane would be given that uh, accolade today. I thought he was, he was tremendous. Throughout. Tremendous. Yeah. You know, you've got to consider this is a fellow that's playing in his first championship season. Played with Cork Juniors last year. Yeah. His leadership and, uh, and his work rate today was absolutely tremendous and you know, an inspiration to those around him. And, uh, you, you look, he also used the ball well. Um, and he drove forward attack, all day. Yeah, and Straight through the heart of the Kerry, Kerry back line. Drove on. Here we see him going through and I think this is where Seamus Moynan comes out and gets a, gets a yellow. Like that's, that was a dodgy tactic as well. Stuff. You know? So, yeah, well done to deserved. Josh Spillane. After the game, he spoke with old man, Jim Carney. It was so very nearly Cork's day and the RTE Sports Sunday Game Man of the Match Award goes to Cork's outstanding centre-half back, Ger Spillane. Ger, many congratulations you. to you. The job, though, is just half done. Yeah, half done, I suppose. Um, there's no point coming down here today and just leaving it at that. We have to do the business now next week. We had a good first half, but um, we were unfortunate to be men down at half time. We had a quick word with ourselves at half time about Anthony Lynch. Um, he's been more for Cork football in the past couple of years than any of the rest of us. We just decided we'd do it for him and we, we nearly got there and hopefully next day we'll finish the job now. Yeah, we were thrilled watching your performance today. Very well done to you. Hope to see much, much more of you in the future. Hopefully. Well done to Joe. Incidentally, absolutely no relation. Now, for some people, the surprising absentees from today's Ulster final.